Welcome back, everyone! This is Duranitis bringing you Pandemicraft Season 4. Today we're starting at episode 25, and unfortunately, I have some bad news for people. Um, it's been fun, and I have uh, appreciated everyone's support, but this is going to be my final episode uh, for this year. Uh, there will be no more Pandemicraft for the rest of this entire year, and I apologize for that. Mayhaps, in a new year, I might consider taking things up again, but a little late, oh, don't oh, you oh. think? A little late, don't you think? <laughs> Pretty please. Pretty please. So anyway, now that everyone, everyone being the 12 people that watch this, have hyperventilated, this video is my New Year's Eve video. So there will be no more Pandemicraft this year, because as of midnight, which is roughly six hours from now when this goes live anyway uh there will be no new year uh, there'll be no or old year left so <laughs> sorry had to have a little fun there i i might get a comment but again then again my viewers don't comment often so i probably won't get to comment at all today we're going to be making ourselves a new thing okay. um last episode i teased dadgummit kitsy now there's presents everywhere and <laughs> Oh, at least they're half. They're considered half. Oh no! Oh, I'm sorry. They're stairs. They're stair they blocks. They also break in two punches. Oh. I didn't get anything. All I got was these sparkly boxes that I'm now gonna throw into my ME system. Well, not my ME system. My storage network. Anyway. So anyway, we've got a lot to do this episode. Um, last episode I teased a infinite power setup. And we're going to start doing that today. Now, we're going to be doing... This is supposed to be the fifth tech episode. And then we're going to do five magic episodes after that. The way I've been running things on so far. Okay. Um, we're going to shake things up a little bit. This episode, we're going to be doing some magic along with some tech. And next episode, we're going to be doing some tech along with some magic. So, we're going to mix these two episodes up, but then after that, we'll go with straight magic for a little bit. Because I am going to do some cross-mod interaction to really wreck some stuff. So, without further ado, we need to continue forward with what we're going to make. Uh, we're going to be making an infinite power source. Uh, unfortunately, the infinite power source is going to be very annoying uh, to everyone. So, we're going to have to build it somewhere where it's not going to annoy people. Uh, one of the first... What the heck was that? Okay, I just, I thought I saw something, but apparently I'm wrong. Uh, so one of the first things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create, um, well, there's where I made the turtle. Um, I built this as a test in creative mode, but I hate using creative mode because it makes it very unrealistic to what you should expect when you're actually building it in a survival mode. So I need to piece this together now building things instead of just having them already. So one of the things we're going to want to do is we're going to want to build a, a – we're going to have to learn to spell. We're going to be building a lightning rod. Uh, a lightning rod base from immersive engineering is going to provide us with infinite power forever. So I need to make – Let's see, it takes nine of these to make the actual multi-block. And that means that I'm going to need 36 of them total. Uh, this is going to be really kind of annoying to make one by one by one. So we're going to first, we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a auto crafting system. Okay. Uh, let's see, the HV capacitor is nothing big, steel, blocks of lead, and so on. Um... So we don't need to worry about that. The electrum wire coil is, that's one recipe. This is another recipe. And that should be fine. So that's two, three, four, five, six. The treated sticks I'll have to make on my own because I, I don't think I can actually use any kind of liquid crafting of this recipe. So... Uh, we're going to need roughly 10 crafting recipes worth of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to use logistics pipes to make crafting stuff because we might as well, right? 
Uh, let's see. So I'm going to need a crafting table from logistics pipes. Here we go. Logistics crafting table. This actually shouldn't be very hard. I should actually be able to hopefully make these. And we're going to need roughly 10. So that being said, we're going to make 15. Because, yeah. All right, so these things are actually really easy to use. Uh, oh, I wound up making 16, so well, whatever. So, oh, by the way, you guys might notice that everything seems a little bit smaller. My GUI scale, uh, I changed the GUI scale down to from auto to large. That way I can have access to NEI while I'm in this area for crafting purposes. So, you know, there you go. Uh, I was also experimenting with the crafting stuff here, making sure I knew how it worked. That way I could seem a little more professional on, on camera. Um, so we're going to be going ahead and putting the logistics crafting tables over here. And I'll explain how one of these works, and then we will come back after I have them all set up, and I will push a button to make it auto-craft, and we'll watch all the fun happen. All right, so we're going to put these along here. Oh, I guess that's it. All right, and we're going to go ahead, and we're going to need some logistics pipes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're going to need logistics pipes, and we're going to need a crafting pipe. Okay, and we should be able to make those rather easy. Um, let's see. Actually, let's just look up logistics pipes. Here we go. Logistic pipes. Uh, oops. Ah, here we go. Provider crafting logistics pipe. But there should be a crafting logistics pipe mark two and three and so on. Here we go. Crafting logistics pipe mark two. And I'm wanting to say that there's supposed to be a mark three and so on. Yeah, there's the Mark III. Now, the Mark III requires a nano hopper, which is a whole bunch of hoppers and in the soldering station. I don't care about it that much. Uh, the difference between the logistic crafting pipes is the first, like if you use the Mark I, you can craft one item per operation. If you use a Mark II, you can craft, I think it's 16. And then Mark III lets you craft a stack or something very close to that. Uh, I'm, I'm probably off just a little bit on that. But uh, anyway, the point is, the higher the crafting mark pipe, the more that you can make at the same time. Crafting pipe mark two. I'm going to use mark two because it's actually incredibly easy to make. It's just the gold chipset. So we're going to need basic logistics pipe, a stone gear, and some redstone. And we're going to make 16 of these. I'm going to laugh because I made... No, I actually did manage to make 16. Cool. And then the chassis Mark II. You know, I really wish they just put these next to each other. It would make a lot more sense in my opinion. Don't mind me. I'm just going to spend the rest of this episode trying to find logistics pipe Mark II. Oh, there it is. I walked. I went right past it a couple times. All right. And that should get us 16 of these. All right. Now, it's actually really simple. Um, I will need a couple of actual logistic basic pipes to hook this into the rest of the system. Um, give me 20 of these. That'll be easy enough. All right, and so now we should be able to run the crafting system pipes here. Um, oh, okay, <laughs> I was about to say, that was a little bit strange, but no, it's just lag. All right, so, and then we're gonna run the connecting pipe through the floor under here. And now they're all hooked up, sweet. All right, so now uh, let me just go ahead and close this floor up so I don't fall in there over and over again. All right, so here's the really simple part. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take a single recipe, which let's see, let's choose a recipe that's required for the lightning rod just because. 
what is it very simple yeah here we go steel frame steel yeah so all it is is six pieces of steel of which I've been making a bunch of steel and I have a hundred and thirty 128 stacks of steel um, max I think we have enough steel now you can use it for whatever you need uh, anyway so you don't actually need more than one piece of steel uh, you can see right here one steel it makes ghost items and as you put the stuff in it shows you the recipes all right so now we have this recipe set up in here and so now we need to go to this pipe and where's my wrench uh, Oh, wrong pouch and if we right click the pipe with the wrench and we click the import button it imports this recipe that we're making steel fence so now when we go over here and we look in here and we look up fence you can see that we have zero steel fence but it will let me request it anyway so we're going to put a stack more and we're gonna hit request okay it says successful and we should see there goes the steel and out comes the steel fences did it make a whole stack at the same time that was either that or I missed it oh yep there it is requested and brought in so sweet alright so I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to program all of these different things to make us the lightning rod pieces and I'll come back in a minute when we actually request it to make the 32 lightning rod bases be right back all right, we're back. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, it's kind of annoying to have to go back and forth uh, to try to figure out what you've already programmed. Uh, so they have this nifty little thing called the Crafting Sign Creator. Uh, we're going to make two of these. Uh, it's just two golden chip sets, a diamond chip set, and a sign. Uh, we're going to make two of these because they aren't infinite. Uh, they actually have durability and will get used up over time. Uh, when you have this set up, you can right-click on the logistics pipe that has an imported recipe and it will tell you what it's making so now you can actually see what we have programmed to do oh wow this thing has a lot more uses than i actually thought it would uh oops empty um and that one's empty too okay so in theory now we can see what we're crafting and hopefully i'll be able to come over here first off we're going to toss this one into the system actually as a matter of fact we're going to go ahead and toss all of this stuff into the system because it's going to be being used to make our stuff all right so we should be able to go ahead and look up lightning rods i hope this actually works because i need 32 of these things because 18 and 18 and, oh 36 36 because math Quest. Why does it say it's missing electrum, steel, and lead? I have it set up to craft those. Because I must have the recipe made up wrong. It's requesting the wrong kind of lead, I'll bet. Let's see, that one. So you're a lead better, eh? Um, let's see. Block of lead industrial craft. Here is where I have it set up to make lead. Block of lead industrial craft. But that's not what it looks like on there. Hmm. Just a second, let me figure this out. Okay, I found it. So, uh, I have railcraft steel. And here it's showing Tinker's Construct steel. Um, so I was having problems with that particular recipe so this is the HV capacitor um, that should be the first one in from here which should be this one and that's kind of strange because it's showing railcraft steel here um, it should then be able to re-import and correct the steel ingots but for some reason it's not and I don't know why but let's do that and in theory that should fix that uh, also the lead block I had the ore dictionary on it wrong I had the lead ingots here but it was saying that it was making the wrong kind of lead block over there so that's what was stopping it there so in theory now 
we should be able to say, give me a lightning rod. Request for one lightning rod successful. So let's make 35 more. Request. Missing 390 electrum ingots. Still, hmm. I must have done something incorrect there. How much electrum do we currently have available? We currently have 542 electrum ingots available. That means that I have the wrong kind of electrum in the recipes. So let's see, this one uses electrum. It's showing thermal foundation. Thermal foundation is what we currently have. So what else uses electrum in this? Is it this? Electrum wire coil, nope. Um, it should be this, and this should be correct. Four electrum ingots. Thermal foundation, thermal foundation. Import, no, let's try that. Four import and that should work let's see that's weird I requested one of these and it said successful yeah lightning rod base successful hmm missing 263 electrum ingots okay um just a second again all right and one of the things by the way when you're doing logistics pipe crafting make sure you actually have enough of the raw resources i did not realize that this was going to take this much electrum i mean i had plenty of stuff to make electrum and i've even got auto making more electrum but uh, i didn't have enough of the electrum to begin with uh, we've got 23 lightning rod bases made, uh, which means that we are now going to need to make 13 more. So plus to 13, request, request successful, quick. And that's it. I love watching that. That's really cool. And we now have 36 lightning rod bases. How cool is that? So now, to go along with that, we are going to need some more of the fence. Um, I really hope that... Well, actually, I, can I request a stack? Over, over here, there's plenty of fences in the wooden chest. No, 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 it has to be steel fence. Oh, never mind. Yeah, this is very special stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and request a couple extra stacks of it. Because if I'm going to make this the way I think I'm going to make this, I'm going to need a lot of steel. So, um, one of the things we're going to have to do, give me one more stack, just because. I've got the steel, I can make more steel, it's not going to kill me to get some extra. Alright, so, that is so cool. Uh, I can make an entire bank of these, they're not hard to make, and the cables, I mean, realistically, logistics pipes can rival uh, applied energistics in certain ways. But in other ways, it's horribly outdone by Applied Energistics. Okay, so you might have noticed earlier in the episode that I have this stuff over here in the side of my inventory. Well, we've handled the tech side of things. Uh, next, we're going to handle some magic stuff. Uh, one of the things I'm going to need... Oh, I forgot a piece of the tech. I need... Um... And I forgot to... Dadgummit. Hang on, I forgot one of the recipes that I needed to autocraft. Well, you know what? No, because I made a bunch of this space stuff. Let's see if we can just make it. That's not what I needed to look up. We're going to make some power storage in the form of Ender I.O. capacitor banks. Uh, yep, vibrant capacitor banks. Yeah, I made a whole bunch of stuff to prepare for this. I should be able to just go ahead and make these. Yes, so that's 10. And I'm going to need... 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 total. And these are vibrant capacitor banks. They hold 25 million RF each. Now, I'll explain why this is important here in just a second. Um, 
Well, actually, it's going to be a little bit longer. How many of these can I make? How much? Okay, yeah, 20 octata capacitors. I didn't think I could. Okay, yeah. Well, we're just going to go ahead and make the extras, because why not? Uh, this is going to be for the power storage once we get this starting started setting up. Uh, as I was saying, um, we're going to have to build a witchery altar uh, over at the location for this particular setup. Okay? Uh, we have a turtle here who's going to use a program to keep things running. We've got chalk because we're going to be using a witchery ritual. We've got a world anchor to keep it loaded because realistically, if I do this and I leave it in the overworld, the server will revolt and uh, and blacklist me, even though it's you know my server. Um, yeah, people won't be happy about that. So I'm going to need a couple of things. Uh, Max, I have to cut your head off. Uh, Hi, I need to cut your head off. Why? Because I'm going to need your head for the altar. And besides, my, my head was offered the last couple times, so... Is that enough? My experience. Oh, save your experience. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go over to the mining world. We're going to clear out an area right there at the mining world spawn area. We're going to make it safe, and we're going to build a altar. Uh, I'm going to need to go ahead and make a chalice and a candelabra and that stuff. Why do I keep searching up there? Because we're going to need a certain amount of... Um... Ah, oh, I need more tombstones. Anyway, we're going to need a certain amount of uh, power in the altar to keep this running uh, correctly. So I need to get Max's head, because I'm not volunteering mine anymore. Um, I'm going to need to clear out an area, grow a bunch of trees. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mining world and set up... Why do we have a spider inside our area? That was weird. Uh, anyway, we're going to basically set up this exact same setup um in the mining dimension so that we don't have people yelling at me for constant noise um realistically we should make some redstone soup because that will actually make things better um this is ten thousand. i don't need ten thousand, but it'd be good to have more than less so hmm, i don't know let me go ahead and get some stuff set up because we don't have that much time left for the episode and i want to get at least a basic setup of this going so we'll be right back Alrighty, we've made it over to the mining world. Uh, I planted some stuff around. As you can see, uh, we're on the surface, and ironically enough, it's raining. Um, I wanted to do this down next to the portal, but clearing out a whole bunch of stone and then prepping for a whole bunch of... It just wasn't really practical. Uh, so instead, we're going to be doing it here. Uh, I mocked this up as where I wanted the altar to be, and then left, hopefully, ground clearly enough to be used uh, for this specific purpose. Uh, so... Basically, there's two ways we can do this. Well, actually, there's like seven ways we can do this. Um, but we're going to be looking at this way specifically. Here's the altar. So if we put up the actual altar here... Okay, it does form by itself. I was trying to remember if it actually formed by itself or if we had to do something special. Uh, I made myself a chalice, a candelabra, a arthana. Uh, Max had to go away for a few minutes, so I went ahead and grabbed my head off of the uh, home altar. And that'll be fine. Candelabra and the Arthana and my head. Hooray! All right. So uh, the only other thing I think that we can add to this would be a um, a pentacle. I, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Like there should be one more thing that we can add to this thing, but I cannot seem to think about what that actually is at this point. But that's okay. Um, we got our charge porter to get us back if we need to go back. But for now, we need to look at the Witchcraft Circle Magic Book. The Circle Magic Book says we can do the Call of Sky or Rite of Sky's Wrath. For a stone sword, wood ash, and 2,000 altar power, it will call a lightning storm outside the circle. Um, the other way is to call a focused lightning storm inside the circle. Um, I'm kind of partial to have it do inside the circle. Uh, realistically, it's going to take a little bit of testing because 
Uh, hey Max, can you make a stone sword and a wooden sword and put it in my my chest for me real quick? Uh, okay. I, I need to test this. Um, so the theory is that we will build the lightning rods and we will build the circle. As a matter of fact, let's just build the circle real quick. I, I can tell you now that I can see at this point that we're not going to be able to finish this build this episode. Uh, it'll have to go pro be prolonged into the next episode. So eh, sorry. All right, so we got that there is the center of the circle. And then we're going to have, uh, let's see, it's going to require a 7x7 seven seven in white. So a 7x7 seven seven circle means that from the center you go out 1, 2, 3, and then out 1, 2, 3, and then out 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. And then connect 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 and connect so that should be the three by three circle uh, the seven by seven circle um, we're going to need now depending on whether we go inside or outside the circle uh, the reason this makes a difference is because when I call the storm there's gonna be a lot of lightning strikes and lightning strikes will burn down trees and burning down trees will cause my um, my forest to burn down, which will decrease the altar power, which makes this not so useful. Um, in the worst case scenario, I can actually like, but put, put a, uh, I can dig down right here and then dig out a large open cavern area beneath and put all these trees in the cavern where they can't be struck by lightning. Uh, unfortunately, witchery has a tendency to put lightning where it feels like lightning belongs, not necessarily uh, where it's practical. Like it'll be, go through blocks, so. Uh, let's see, how much power do we have? 3840? Oh, yeah, that's plenty, regardless of how it works out. I can even burn down a couple trees, and it should be okay. Um, so let's see. We're going to need, uh, let's see, a wooden sword and wood ash to keep it inside the circle. Now, a lot of you people are going to see where this is going, and for those of you who do, congratulations. You're smart. For those of you who don't, well, next episode I'll complete the build, and you'll be able to see what's going on there. Um... Let's see. Realistically, what I need to do is set up the lightning rod bases and get the general idea of this set. Now, hmm. Well, it's going to call a storm, a thunderstorm. And it'll strike a bunch of lightning inside the circle if I specify inside the circle, and outside the circle if I specify outside the circle. Uh, this is why I'm calling this, a, uh, this is the techno witch setup, because you use witchery to call the storm and then the technology to harness the lightning. That's why I, I, I'm a techno witch. Um, don't know why I just said that. Anyway, um, it's probably because the people on the server, I've been telling them I'm going to be a techno witch for a while now. So, anyway, um, I'm going to need to make this into a built out grid. We're going to use this area over here. Uh, let's see. So, we're going to do. One, two, three, like that. Then we're going to skip one. And then we're going to skip one. Oh, seriously? I'm off one block. That's not funny. Actually, that's hilarious. All right, in that case... I hope I still have my engineer's hammer in my bag. Ten bucks says I put it away in the ME system. Uh, well, the I'm gonna call it the ME system, okay? I'm so used to the idea of an ME system, but I'll bet that I don't have. Nope, I don't have the hammer. Great, that's okay. Um, you right-click in the center of these to form them, and that will be fine. So anyway, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach these capacitor banks. And the reason these capacitor banks are important is because they form a multi-block, okay? By putting these together, we have a maximum input of 325,000 RF per tick, okay? Um, and we need to have that much input because lightning generates a whole lot of power. So, I mean, realistically, I would like to go ahead and just ring these completely in octatic capacitors, but my god, that would take a lot of stuff to do. Um, so that's not going to function. So realistically, once we get the rest of this built, um, we should be generating more power than even these can take. We'll be taking in 325,000 RF per tick, 
in theory anyway, and uh, and transmitting it as well. So I'm going to have to figure out how this is all going to make up. I need to go get the hammer. Um, I've got the chunk loader here to keep this chunk loaded. The altar has plenty of power. Um, I need to go get my hammer. I need to uh, build a lattice. Uh, basically, the lightning rods themselves are fine, but you need the steel fence. And the steel fence you place in the center. And basically, we need to build it up into the sky. Uh, up to build height is what they say. It's, it's best to build it all the way up to the very maximum height. Uh, it actually doesn't say a whole lot in here, uh, the engineer's manual. If you look at power wires and generators, the lightning rod, it says that it generates a lot of raw power, and it says uh, st stack steel fences on the multi-block, you increase the chance of a lightning bolt striking it during rain or thunderstorms. Okay. Uh, you it struck, and a huge amount of energy is created and stored in the base of the lightning rod, and is then slowly distributed to energy connections at the sides. And that's why we have the um, the capacitor banks. Because it does it slowly, but if I have them on multiple sides, it's going to export a lot faster. So, unfortunately, we're out of time for the episode. Um, as you can see, it's formed by clicking the central block with an engineer's hammer. So, uh, you can improve the chances of the lightning rod getting struck by creating a net of steel fences connected to the topmost fence. Okay? So, basically, I need to build this up vertically... And then once I get up there, I need to build a large lattice work of, st of steel fences up there. And that will increase my chances of getting lightning struck. So what I'm going to do in between episodes is I'm going to go get my hammer. I won't form these. I'll wait until the beginning of the next episode to form them so you guys can see it. Because, I mean, it's not spectacular or anything, but I think it'll be pretty cool. And uh, we'll come back next episode, and I will have built the lattice work, and I'll have the hammer ready. And we'll start from there. And in theory, we'll get the turtle running, we'll get the lightning storms being called, and lightning being begin striking, and uh, we should hopefully then, we'll have to build a couple more things, and we'll be able to transmit energy from here out, and then uh, have power constantly going. So, I really hate that I'm ending this at this point in the episode, but it's just, it's, it's too big, it's too big, it's going to take two episodes. Uh, it won't take much of next episode to finish. But I'm going to do something else in the next episode that will justify the, the creation of so much power. So until next time, this is Jeronitis signing off on episode 25 of Pandemicraft Season 4. Uh, like me if you like me. Subscribe if you want to see what I get into next. And as always, help spread, help spread the gaming! The gaming.